Hey everybody, it's coffee time. Um, but due to the stormy weather, Brother Harwood could not get over here. So Tracy and myself made it. And we are going to ask you all, after this is over, please share this and go to Graham's Coffee Time on YouTube and like and subscribe to that. And that way we can, uh, we can get this word around the world. Tonight, we're just, uh, we're winging it, as they call it, and this scripture just came to me, Colossians 6, 12. There are no seats. <laughs> okay, maybe I did not hear that from the Lord. <laughs> there are no okay. seats. How about 4, 12? 4, 12, all right. Maybe that 4, 6. Is... Maybe. <laughs> what is it? Uh... Anyway, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ, Jesus sends greetings. He's always, he's always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. Okay. Now, we know what's going on in the world. Every Christian in America, and this is being taught in the pulpits now, needs to get out and vote. We're not going to tell you to vote for, but get out and vote. You know what the Word of God stands for. You know the devil is alive and, and well on planet Earth, but we know that Jesus Christ will be back soon one day, and we're going to be ready for the rapture by doing everything we can to prepare for that, which is keeping prayer and keeping the Word of God and to teach prayer people because we want everybody to go to heaven you know jesus does too that's why he died for the world not for just a few for you as well as us and you know something i heard one time it was um jesse duplantis had written this book called the late let's see well close encounter of the god kind it there was a part in that that it said that when jesus had to look at people and say, depart from me, I never knew you. Don't you think it broke his heart to do that? Mm -hmm. After him making a way, and what a sacrifice that he did on the cross. You know, what a sacrifice before the cross. I mean, the beatings and the, the horrible things that he was called and the things he endured. And, you know, we take it lightly, those stripes on his back. We take that lightly. Well, Lord, if it's your will, yes, that's true, and to pray in God's will. But, you know, he did put had those stripes on his back for our healing. And we need to claim that if God sends us on to heaven, if he takes us on, then we know God's will was that, that one or us, that he healed us ultimately. But there's also healing on earth. There's healing for anything that we've got. God is has got it covered and that is so wonderful to know that he loves us that he would have taken a beating for us for you know just so we can be healed he was uh, wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and by the chastisement the stripes on his back was for our healing and then of course the ultimate sacrifice was when they nailed him to the cross and his blood ran out. And we cannot take that lightly. We have got to get this word out. The things that I've heard that's happened over the past weekend, uh, sacrilegious ceremonies, I'm so hurt that they would do that to Jesus because he is so such a wonderful, the only true God. And it's so sad that people would do that. But, you know, be not mocked. Be not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And God is well and able to chastise the ones he loves, and he's also able to punish the ones. Hell was created for Satan. If you don't choose the path of Jesus Christ and the cross, then you have made your choice. You can either choose to go, or you've already chosen. And when it's too late, when that door closes, depart from me, I never knew you. He didn't know you. 
Does Jesus know you? What is it to really be known by Christ? Do you call upon him daily? I mean, do you talk to him? What what have you got to add to that, Tracy? Um Well, I think that we don't need to spend a lot of time and attention on what those people have done and I know it's grievous to the Holy Spirit. I know it does. Yeah, it hurts my grief. feelings for it. It does. But that's why Jesus went to the cross for people just like that. That's exactly right. And we have to lift them up in prayer. That's true. I mean, we have to pray for them. Let's see who's saying hi. Huh? Have you got your phone uh, in here? Jeanette. Hey, Jeanette. And Sherry and Kelly. Hey, Sherry and Kelly. I can see. <clears throat> I don't know where my, I guess my phone's in my purse. But anyway, um, I want to, sh let's share the, um, parable of the four souls. Let's Go ahead. Because no matter what is going on in the world, we still have to carry out the Great Commission. We still have to plant seeds. Exactly. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. You want me to run and get your phone Sarah. so we can read these Indeed. messages? Sarah is my cousin. My pocketbook. Hold on, guys. Oh, that's one I heard. I got these new glasses. I could see pretty good with <laughs> Oh, they're pretty. <laughs> they're the same as the same old frames ones were. Been... Yeah. That's <laughs> actually their new frames, but the same kind. He found the exact same kind. All right. Let me see. Here we go. Hey, Miss Shirley. Turn this down. Your brother-in-law is at home out of the storm. Davy's watching. I'm glad he didn't get washed away. Yes. <laughs> I was worried. Um. We need to open up a prayer though before we before we start and I want to um have everybody say a special prayer for Sherry and her mom. Um she's having some issues with her legs and has been fighting a, a walker for gosh it, since last November. So we're gonna pray and believe for her healing. Um and anybody, anybody any special requests that you have? Well, we know that Bobby Beard had a, a blood yeah. clot in his leg last week. and uh, Have you heard an update? I hadn't heard from Sean. No, I've not so heard. I've heard. not read on Facebook. And we have a lot of people that are watching that if you if you guys need prayer, you don't have to just, you know, text us on uh, coffee time. You can also right, message time. us. Either one of us, both of us. Absolutely. Because we will stop what we're doing and pray for you. I know there was a lady on uh, Facebook yesterday that, that shared that she just needed prayer so bad. It was a, a friend of ours that we used to go to church with. And uh, I won't say her name because I don't have permission to. But God knows who you are. And God knows your needs. Whether we know them or not, God is listening to you. And the Bible says wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. And that's us. That's you all. Mm -hmm. We are in agreement that the Lord will be here tonight. So Tracy, lead us in prayer. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather together to talk about you, to talk with you. We thank you for the fellowship. Lord, we lift Sherry and Marsha up to you. Yes. Kelly Brooks um, and her mom. We lift these people up to you. We speak life into them and curse any any plans that Satan has for them. We curse them at the roots. We speak to their bodies and ask and command them to line up with the Word of God. We speak health to them and power and and encouragement and faith. Lord, we speak your faith over them too. Uh, we thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would carry it out to those ears that are listening and just help somebody. Help us to plant seeds into good ground and the ground that's not good, Lord. We put, we ask the Holy Spirit to, to till up that ground, to turn it into good ground so that we can sow seeds 
to further your kingdom. And we give you praise and glory and honor because you're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Okay. okay Tracy, what you got? So I'm going to, going back to, I think we hit on Mark 4 a little bit. Maybe last week or that might have been at church. I don't know. Sometimes it runs together. But anyway, it's uh, Mark 4. Um, verse, I'm going to start with verse uh, 10. Um, when he was alone, the tw and he, there's talking about Jesus. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. I've been that ground before. Others like seeds sown on rocky places hear the word and at once they receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. And it does. It, I mean, persecution and trials and tests, they, they come. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need to lean into the Lord and lean into the word more so that you can have understanding. Because right. it's easy. I mean, it's easy to just, okay, I'm yeah. not doing this. ain't working. I'm not doing this. Right. You know, you have to hang in there. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even a 100 times what was sown. He said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears, let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear. He continued, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Who, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And then, you got something to add about? Go ahead and explain that while I turn this off, this thing is off. Oh, okay. So, consider carefully what you hear. With, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's talking about judgment, right? 14, 21, let's see, where's it at? 21. If a lamp doesn't help people see, it's useless. Does your life show other people how to find God and how to live for Him? If not, ask what bowls have extinguished your light. Complacency, resentment, stubbornness of heart, or disobedience could, uh, could keep God's light from shining through you to others. I think it's very important. It's easy to when we see things like we've seen this week with that Paris deal and all that, I mean, it is sad and it does anger us, but. We've got to remember the big picture, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We You're do. right. You're right. I mean, I'm, I was shocked, but, um, I remember. I was initially like, how could they do that? That's I wouldn't brass. be in their shoes for their socks. You no, know, that, absolutely not. That kind of well, attitude. Well, that's true. But, but there is a righteous anger to Tracy. There is. And that doesn't mean we hate them for what happened. We need to pray exactly like you said. We need to pray for them. Yeah, we, we need to have a burden. Yeah, I for remember. Those people. I remember one time I was, uh, I was substitute teaching at this school. And it was Easter. 
I happened to um, sub for this music teacher, and when I was in the class, I taught the children an Easter song. It was like they already knew Peter Cottontail and all that, but I was teaching them like Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow, something like that. And whenever class was over, I was approached by the principal, and he told me, he said, never mention Jesus or God in this school again. I remember going home and just laying on my bed and crying and saying, Lord, I am so sorry after what you've done for this man. He has no idea the price you paid, and then he rejects you like that and, you know, dares me to speak your name in the school. And it hurt me for <coughs> Jesus. It hurt me that people do that to him. That hurts my feelings for God. And, you know, I don't know what happened. I never reported that, but it broke my heart. I was crying and telling the Lord, Lord, I'm so sorry this man has, has said that about you. Well, the next school year, because that was Easter and there wasn't very many days left of school after that, but the next school year, he was no longer the principal. And I have no idea what happened to him, but he was gone. And, you know, that God takes, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. Mm -hmm. Does God love those people? Yes. But, you know, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right. They are treading on dangerous ground. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're being, the devil's just rampant in America. We don't have to go into all the stuff. Y'all know it. If you watch the news, if you hear it all, you know what's going on. And it just shows us that the time is drawing near. Yes, it is. It is, and we need to we need to hunker down and pray harder. And yeah, I mean, you, we need to press in, press towards the mark. That's right. That is exactly right. Press to the mark of the high calling, which is mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. And you know. I was reading something about, I think it was in Acts the other day, and it was Paul where he was, um, he had told these people, you know, I won't be back. This is the last time you'll see me, and their hearts were broken. And it, it caused me to think, well, it was right after he had been in the prison, and Paul and Silas were, you know, they were in prison chains and uh, bleeding stripes. They'd been beaten, but they started praising God and their chains fell off. Yes. The jailer, the jailer was there and knew he just needed to kill himself because he was going to die anyway for them escaping. But they said, wait, we're not going anywhere. And that's what Brother Harwood taught mm -hmm. on last week. And then the jailer and his family was saved mm -hmm. because of that. And just like Brother Harwood said, when God has you in a situation or places you in a situation and you don't know why and you wish, well, I wish I'd known this, I wouldn't have got into this or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's not about us anymore. When we give our life to Christ, it's about His work right. through us. Yes. And that's sometimes hard to do. Yes, it is. We, I can't see who that is. Amy, Amy Pat. Amy Patterson. We are hey, so Amy. glad y'all are on here. Yes, thank y'all for joining us. Yes, we we have been doing this for three years, and you know, I it was just amazing how it started, and Tracy was just right right on board, and so we just took off with it, and we just hope that somehow we have helped somebody just point the way to the cross because Jesus Christ is the answer. He totally is the answer. Yes, he is. Anything else? Well, the time is approaching. There's Judy. Hi, Judy. We don't know when our time is up. I'm 70. Tracy's 50-something. She's a baby. Seven. 57. 57. We never know when we're going to take that last breath. Through a car wreck, through a stroke, through a heart attack through whatever, cancer, whatever, we do not know. But we urge y'all to be ready. 
you know, stay in the Word of God every day. I know that the Lord impressed me this morning that I had slacked down a little bit to get right back in that Word, and it would fight any fiery darts. We use the Word of God mm -hmm. as our shield, and if we don't know the Word of God, then it's not going to come up in our mind when we need the Word of God, but it right. promises that it will. And it does. I, so many times, I, I'm not good at quoting scriptures and knowing where they're at. And I mean, I have to, I, I have to look stuff at. up. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll remember a few words of it. But you know, when the when the when the rubber meets the road, and you really yes. need to grab a hold of God, that the Holy Spirit will bring that stuff to you. Yes, He will. I mean, and you'll be. Or I'm like, Every I don't know time. how I remembered that, yeah. but I rem but. The Lord brought it to my remembrance. That's right. And he always does. He will do that. You know, the Bible says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And he is. Mm -hmm. He is there, right in the midst of your storm. If you're going through something tonight and you don't know why, you don't know how, and you don't know when you're going to get deliverance, mm -hmm. I can promise you, hang in there and trust God. Do not speak doubt. Praise Him in the storm. We had talked about that last week yes. as well. Yes, and life and death being in the tongue. Be careful. Be careful what you let. No, oh, that was Pastor Eddie was talking about that. That's good. No, no, Go it wasn't Pastor Eddie. We had a special speaker. I can't remember what his name was, but he talked about that, what, what you let come out of your mouth and stuff. Yes. He was good, and I'm sorry I can't remember his name. Well... They probably know him if they went to your church. Yeah, you, know, you could go. You could go to uh, the Grove page on Facebook, and the the videos probably on there. It's it's awesome. It really is. He did a great job, and I had never heard of him before. So I guess that's why I can't remember his name. I just can't remember his name. Danny, maybe Danny something. I don't know. Really sweet man, good man of God. Shared a great word. But that was that was part of it. Dory said, or, or Davy says, Danny Phillips. Phillips, that that's it. Danny Phillips. Thanks, Davy. He is the <laughs> best. I love him. He's so I sweet. Know. He's my boy. Yes, he is. He's mine too. I've known him since he's like eleven, haven't I? Mm -hmm. It's about eleven. Ten or eleven, yeah. I yeah. Think Matt and yeah, Jeanette and Corey wasn't in school yet. Boy, I'll tell you what, that Jeanette and Corey liked to kill us, and Davy and Matt was just best buddies, and mm -hmm. they've always been, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's good to see both of them serving God. Yes. For sure. Don't give up on your kids. No. We've seen our kids go through things that you wouldn't believe God's brought them through, but you know he did. Yeah. He says you and your household. That's right. Pray for those grandchildren. Pray for those children. Never give up. Never give up. The main thing is don't go by what you see. Right. What you feel. What you can touch yeah. in the spiritual realm. You have to go by what the Word of God says. What what the Lord says. You can't. Even when it looks impossible and you're like, there is no way. Right. On God's green earth that this is right. going to turn around. Turn around. And then it does. God that turns it around. Instantly. Because his thoughts are not our thoughts. And you know what? No matter how low we stoop, and I'm talking about all of us, mm -hmm. uh, when, when, I was, when I really got saved, I mean, I was 10 when I gave my life to the Lord, but then I grew up and, you know, the more desperate you are for Jesus, the more you get of him. Mm -hmm. He'll go as far as you want to go, as far as your life. When you're young and you go to church and get saved, that's wonderful. Yeah. But then, you know, I was like moved around and didn't go back to church for a long time. But when I did reach rock bottom in my life, I remembered who God was. And I remembered that that was my only hope. And that's what saved me. That's what... You know, I gave it to him and said, Lord, I, I don't want anything in my life. If if you don't want it, just end it because I don't want it. You can have it. And he took my life and, you know, forgave me of all my sins, washed me clean, filled me with his spirit. And, you know, I, 
you'll never be the same again. You know how I got back in church again after I got away? How? When I was, when I uh, had Corey, I was at the hospital in labor and they gave me a, they gave <clears throat> me a medication, they called it a pit drip. And apparently they gave me too much of it. Now mind you, I couldn't have children. I had taken all kinds of medicine to try to help me get pregnant. And I finally prayed and asked God, my Aunt Joy, she prayed the same prayer. Lord, please let me have a child or take this desire out of my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what I prayed. And I went off of the fertility medicine and two months later I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I knew it was God. It had to be, you know, there's no way else. But anyway, so then had a smooth easy easy pregnancy didn't even really have morning sickness much to even speak of Amen. it was it was a great pregnancy and then i went into labor was in labor for 36 hours and they gave me a pit drip to make the labor come mm -hmm. more and they gave me too much and yeah and corey's heart rate went out the roof of course at the time they didn't tell me i had no idea what was going on i didn't i didn't know that but anyway so they all went outside and outside in the hallway and my aunt joy was there and she said that david just broke down and started crying and was like promising god if you let them live i promise you that i'll raise them in church i'll raise Corey and david in church if you'll just let them live and so that's how we ended up going, going to back to church and, and the Lord just worked it out. Where Well, we started in um, Hickson. They call it C4 now. But it was a church I grew up in. Grover Dunn pastored it for years. But anyway, so we started there. And then we met John Allen through Jeff and Ray, I, I think, is who... Introduced us anyway. We ended up back at Graceville, at Graceville Church of God, and we started singing and ministering, and we just that's how we came back to the Lord. That's wonderful because David made a promise that he would raise Corey in church. That's Amen, that's, and he did. I mean, yeah, he, he did. did. He did. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So. And he he does keep his word, mm -hmm. and you know God doesn't work on our time. Yep. He works on his, he is, he doesn't even, he's not even in time. So when we think, okay, it's been five years, my kids ought to be coming to the Lord now. That time is nothing to the Lord. Right. You know, he's got a plan. He is working on things. Will he force himself on somebody? No. But when we pray for our children, he can bring them to the point to where they'll ask for him. Or that'll be their only hope. I've seen him right. do that. He did that with me. Mm -hmm. And he can do it for your children. Don't ever give up on them. And we don't know. We don't know. When we dedicate our, our kids to the Lord and say, Lord, I pray that you have an anointing on his life, that he works for you, da 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 Right. Um, that he shares and wins people to the Lord. You know, we pray for all that stuff. But you gotta, you got to go through a journey. you got to get some... Some you got to have some tests. Mm -hmm. You got to go through some tests to get a testimony. Right. You have to. So, like Brother Harwood said last week, you know, maybe what you're going through is God's plan to prepare f to prepare you for what He has ahead That's of right. you. I had no, I had no mother, no daddy. Was raised by my grandparents. And I know that God, I know that I, I walked that journey for a specific reason so that I could see both sides of that, of that coin. You know what I'm talking about. I'm yes. not going to call any names or anything, but yes. y'all that know me know. And, you know, I could have, uh, maybe I could have never uh, been through what I, what I went through had I not walked those first steps and walked, you know, come through that battle and it prepared me it, it prepared me so a lot of times when you think the lord is not there you can't feel him you can't hear him you can't see him 
he's there. That's when he's working. That's when he's working, and that's when you just have to praise him. Praise him in the storm. Praise him on the mountain. Praise him when things are good, but always keep praise on your lips for the Lord. Yes. Don't give up. No matter what, no matter what the situation looks like, God can turn it around in an instant. He can, he can do things that we can't even imagine. Yes. You know, Sarah said when the angel of the Lord came to her and said, you're going to have a child. It's not Sarah was in her late 80s. Oh, no. I know. Abraham mean, <laughs> was in his 90s. It's like, I can't imagine it. She laughed. Right. And the angel said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? There's not. There's we no, can just get that. Yeah. There's no <laughs> situation you guys have that God cannot take care of. No. There is nothing that God can't do. That's right. So because she laughed when the angel told her that, her baby, she named Isaac, which meant laughter. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Judy Keelan said, Alvin Hill had a good time with Corey in church. Yeah. Corey about drove Alvin Hill nuts in church. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little thing. They just picked on him. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Judy would say, too. And Jean. Jean would not let Alvin fall. He couldn't do any wrong. She wouldn't hardly let me and David get on to him, either. <laughs> well, I know, but... I mean, I just I just had this... We just disconnected. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't because we didn't think he needed punishment. It's just that we could see the tender side of him. And, you know... Everybody's got that. Everybody's got a good side and a bad side. But mm -hmm. once Jesus comes in, you know, the the old man is pushed aside. The old man, we become new creatures in Christ. Right. And we praise God. And I have seen Tracy praise God in the storm, and she's seen me praise God in the yes. storm. I don't care what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. I do care. But whatever you're going through, God cares. Jesus is there with you. Nothing's too big for him. Nothing. Nothing. He can handle any problem. Any kid problem, any husband problem, yes. any wife problem, parent problems, whatever. Any kind of There's sickness. Jean. I think it says Jean or Josh. I don't know. I guess. <clears throat> but you guys, we thank y'all so much for you know, doing this for, for joining us every Tuesday evening. It's so sweet. And we hope that y'all will share this. And maybe we've said something that will lift the name of the Lord up and that will uh, that'll draw all men to Him because that is our mission, yes. is to um, draw men to the Lord and want the way. Yes. We, we have found the way, and a lot of you have too, and if you know somebody that has a, just pray for them. Yes, let's just encourage each other to, yes. to point the way. Because we are still, we're in this until Jesus takes us home. And we need to be working. I'm stepping on my own toes. Me too. <laughs> we need to be working towards enlarging heaven because they say that hell, or the Bible says that hell's enlarging itself. Yeah. Every day. And we want our family to be in heaven with us. We want, yeah. And you know something that just came to me, and it's like, golly, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, when when they were spitting on Jesus and pulling out his beard and cursing him and saying, if you be the son of God, come down when he was on the cross. And what did Jesus do? What did he say to him, Lord? Uh, what did he say to the Father about him? Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to be saying with those people that were over there, that sacrilegious mess they did, mm -hmm. and uh, all the ones that are in the world that's be, we're in the world, but we don't have to be a part of it. Right. Just pray for them, ask God to forgive them, ask the Holy Spirit to. Uh, to draw them to the cross because nobody's going to be saved unless the Holy Spirit draws them. That's right. So That's right. The Holy Spirit has to draw. With yes. nothing in our power. No, at all. We're just pointing the way. We're just right. messengers. 
a small ones, the angels yeah. are the big ones. Not the, the small insignificant ones. ones. Yeah. <laughs> but we try. <laughs> we love you too, guys. Shirley. All right, you, and Judy, prayers needs for prayers. Judy. Okay. You want to pray, Tracy, and then I'll uh, pray too. Okay. Father, I just lift Sister Judy up to you. And Glenor, oh Lord, give them strength and courage and give them health with their bodies. Um, we love them so much. And Father, I just ask your Holy Spirit just to wrap your arms around them. We thank you for the fact there's so many people out there that are hurting. Please, Lord, give us a, a heart for the lost ones that are in this world. That's what you came for. And I just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I ask you to soften my heart toward the ones in this world that's uh, perverting the skills and the things they're doing, Lord. And I've been so angry at them. I pray you'll take that anger out, Lord, and you'll put a heart of compassion and, and prayer for these people, Lord. You know who all they are. They're all across America, all across the world. Father, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I pray, Lord, that you'll stand by your people now. I know that that you love them and they know you love them, Lord, and to open their eyes to the true Messiah. In Jesus' name, we pray these things and we bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so much. Yes, we do. Uh, share this and go on YouTube. Under Graham's Coffee Time, I'm going to start calling this Graham's Coffee Time so it won't be so hard for them to remember. Right. And us. And you guys, God bless you. And we'll see you, God willing, next week. If the Brother Rachel will be back next week. The Lord willing, we all will. <laughs> and, and hey, we might leave in the rapture. We might. I'll see y'all on my horse if we do. <laughs> yeah. Y'all okay. have a blessed night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.